Today my subject is simply living without condemnation. <coughs> living without condemnation. I believe that too many believers, too many Christians are walking through this life condemned. Mm. When Jesus said there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. The most important verses in the Bible in my Christian life is when I came across there is therefore now no condemnation. Yeah. I could never understand. Abraham lied to his wife. David committed adultery. And yet they were not condemned. They suffered the consequences of their action. And that we will do. We will always be disciplined for what we do in our bodies and in our life. But when we have Christ Jesus, we are not condemned. And I think Amen. we should give the Lord a hand Hallelujah. right there. Amen. 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 So what is condemnation this morning, folks? Well, it says that there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. It is easy to describe condemnation by talking about how you feel. Mm. Okay, number one, you feel guilty. Wow. We know we did wrong. We'd be condemned for it. You're on death row. You're in prison. You got caught with your hand in the cookie jar <laughs> and you feel guilty. Okay. Or you feel fear. Fear of punishment. Fear of how somebody's going to look at me. Fear of what somebody's going to think about me. So I'm not only guilty, but now I'm going to be punished. Something I've done is wrong, and I'm going to be condemned. And the last part of that, you feel self-rejection. I want to go by myself, away by myself, cover myself, okay? I blew it. How stupid I was based on who? Based on somebody's opinion. Mm. Not based on God's word, okay. but we're basing it on somebody's <laughs> opinion. Who cares what somebody says? Did they die on the cross for you? Mm. Have they resurrected for you? Do they sit at the right hand of God the Father for you? <laughs> Jesus died. Yes. Jesus resurrected. And Jesus sits at the right hand as our advocate. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I will trust that before I trust the human instinct or what the human opinion is Amen. about me. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. The Bible says, here's the sin in our lives. The sin is not what we do. The sin is living under those feelings. Hmm. Feelings of guilt, feelings of fear, feelings of self-condemnation, feelings of rejection. What if I don't make this decision? If I don't make this decision today, well, this person is going to think this way or that way about me. Every decision that we make that is made in fear, we are going to reap the fruits of it at a later date. We're not going to reap it now, but I'm going to make this decision because I'm in fear I'm going to lose out. Oh my God. When you make the decision in fear, I guarantee you that down the road you will reap the consequences mm. of that decision. That's right. You may think it looks good at the beginning because I'm in fear of what this person is going to do to me or think about me. And what happens? I make the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. And I keep on living in the wrong decision. And what God says, his presence is so far away that you don't even sense his presence anymore. Mm. Because why? The decision that you made in fear has now come full blown. Mm -hmm. It has come into the results yes. that you can see before your very eyes. So in Romans 7... 
Paul went through the struggle, 715 to 16. He said, all the things I want to do, I end up not doing. And all the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. I'm miserable because I can't make myself do what I want to do. I know what's right, but I can't do it. At the end of that chapter 7, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Yes. That's a struggle, folks. Mm -hmm. Paul is struggling. Okay? Remember I said that in chapter divisions, there are no originals. So it goes right into mm -hmm. chapter 8, 1 and 2. Yeah. It has to deal with the previous chapter. He's talking about the Christian who is struggling. We all struggle. We all go through various things in our lives where we are struggling. Oh, but when we read the word of God, our struggle is only for a small time. Mm -hmm. It's only for a period yes. of time. Who can separate us from the love of God? Shall anything, trials, tribulation, yeah. envy, sore, mm -hmm. what can separate us from his love? Nothing. A decision that is passed into law mm -hmm. is going to separate you from the love of God? No. My God. So, a Christian who is struggling then, is not under condemnation. See the lie of the enemy? The lie of the enemy says to you that because you are struggling, you must be under conviction. Mm -hmm. Remember Job's friend? Mm -hmm. Job's friend said, hey, Job, he must have sinned. Man, this, this stuff happening to you, just like you, you must be did something really wrong. We have a lot of Job's friends around us sometimes. <laughs> isn't it? Okay, a lot of people that Whisper in our ear. Okay? Now, how does God respond to me then when I sin? I'm going to get a little deep this morning. When a Christian sins, what happens? If we don't understand this, we're going to avoid God out of fear. Mm -hmm. The moment that we fall into sin, guilt, condemnation, we're going to say, oh, I, I can't go before God like this. In fact, you know what? Um... In religion, they tell you, oh, you shouldn't partake of the communion because now you're, you're, you're guilt, you're in fear. How is that possible? <coughs> who died for you? The one who is distributing the communion? Mm -hmm. Did the person next to your left or your right <laughs> die for you? Mm -hmm. But I'm guilty this morning, so I'm going to be... I'm going to humiliate myself. Thank you for that word. That word's still writing, by the way. I'm going to humiliate myself by not partaking. And the enemy says, I got another one. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said that we should partake what? Every day, depending on how you feel. Did you read that portion in the Bible? I'm going to partake of the, of the communion this morning uh, by how I feel. Nope. As often. Okay, as often as you drink a remembrance of who? Jesus. Okay, thank you. We're going to find it hard to feel close to him most of the time. Why? Because we're avoiding him out of fear. God does not reject me when I sin. John chapter 6 verse 37 if you are a Christian this morning, meaning that you have given your life to Christ Jesus, God says in his word, he's never going to reject you. Here's the quote. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will in no means cast out. God will never cast you out. He will never reject you once you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Christian doesn't have to worry about God kicking him out of his family. Oh, that mess me. <laughs> Amen. Okay? I know my, my, my physical family could kick me out any time they want. <laughs> but God never does. Never. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry this morning about losing my salvation. Okay? I didn't do anything to obtain it. Come on now. 
So therefore, I can't do anything in which I will lose it. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. God doesn't write you off. He loves you. He accepts you even when we sin. Why? Because his love is unconditional. Yes. He does not use guilt to manipulate us. Mm. If you have placed in the offering this morning and it's guilt, I recommend you will go to our deacons yes. and our minister and said, I gave this morning based on guilt. I need to have it back because it's not a blessing to me. It's not a blessing to this assembly. So take it back and then give it properly. Mm -hmm. The word of God says that. You give anything out of guilt or out of fear in the kingdom of God, it is not there for the use for the kingdom of God. It's supposed to be a cheerful. A cheerful, happy, blessed. All right? To give. All right? Amen. So you heard me. Deacon, this morning, will go back down in that offering and correct everything if you've given in guilt. Amen. Okay, am I right, Deacon? Amen. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now, if you are a believer this morning, God has already accepted you, and according to his word, he cannot reject you. You are in Christ, and to reject you would be to reject himself. That's right, amen. Romans 9.15 is a quote from Exodus 33.19. I will have mercy on, whom I, uh, on whomever I will have mercy. That's right. And I will have compassion mm -hmm. on amen. whomever I will have compassion. That's right. He's saying my love for you is not dependent on how you react That's to it. Right. I chose to love you. I chose to have mercy on you. My love is unconditional. If it's not, I love you if. Did you read that? Mm. I love you if you do this. It, yes. I love you, period. That's, That's what it. God says. That's it. Okay, unconditional love. Yeah. Oh, is it because our acceptance is not based on our performance? Remember, we talked about that this morning, Romans 9, 16. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. God's love for us, God's salvation for us, does not depend on our desire or our effort. It depends on God's mercy. It is unconditional. How about because our acceptance is based on our position in Christ? That's what God says through Romans 8, 1. No condemnation for those who are underlined in Christ. Yes. That's the most popular phrase right. used to describe a, tr a, a Christian. 167 times in the New Testament, you see that portion, in Christ. Amen. That's the word for saying, I'm a Christian. Amen. Amen. Romans 3, 21 to 22, but now a righteousness from God apart from the law has made me known to which law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through what? Faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Have you ever felt when you sin that God is far away from you? Mm. Have you ever felt that way? We all go through that, folks. You feel sometimes like he's a million miles away. <laughs> And that he has left you. Mm. We all go through that. <laughs> we all go through that. Yes, leave her on that side. <laughs> See, I, I feel that I'm far away from him. He I, stays where he is. That's right. <laughs> there you go. He does not move. He does not move. Those feelings are not from God. Here's a bumper sticker. Yes. If you feel far from God, guess, guess who moved? moved? Amen. God does not reject you even when you sin. Why? Because you are in Christ. God will never reject me for any reason. Okay? No matter what I do, he 
will never leave me. He will never treat me as an enemy. He will always treat me, hallelujah, as a son. And remember that has no gender attached to it. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no gender. That's right. That's one of the things it means to live without condemnation. No matter what I do, God will not wipe me out. I will be disciplined, but God will not reject me. Because I am in Christ Jesus. In the letter to the church at Ephesus, our Tuesday night Bible study is going through Ephesians right now. Paul wrote that the saints were faithful in Christ Jesus. That we are blessed with every spiritual blessing yes. in the heavenly places in Christ. Christ. God chose us in him yes. before the foundation of the world. Yes. That he may accept, made us accepted in the in beloved. The and yes. he said that in him we had obtained what? An inheritance. Yes. That is all in the first chapter yes, of Ephesians. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Number two. I'm trying to answer the question, how did God respond to me when I sin? Number mm. two. God is not angry at me when I'm inconsistent. Mm. <laughs> Hello? Yes. We get yes. angry at ourselves. Yes. We get impatient. But God doesn't. Mm -hmm. One of the most beautiful truths you can learn this morning in Scripture is that God is patient with all of us. Oh, yes, He is. He understands that it takes time for us to grow. Even when you are inconsistent, He does not condemn you. Amen. That's what Paul is talking about, struggling up and down on a roller coaster. But God is not angry mm. at me. Why? Because God knows exactly what we're made of. Yes, he does. God knows that we are humans. One of the reasons God is never uptight or irritated, amazed, is because he made us. <laughs> he knows what we're like. He knows you have human weaknesses mm -hmm. and frailties. He knows your struggle against sin. He knows you're not perfect. That's good news, folks. Amen. He is like a father that has compassion for his children. Hallelujah. When those children began to walk, they stumble. Yes. They fall. We're going to have a Bethel's child. Trust me. I'm going to see that child walk around. And I don't want to see the two of the parents running behind them and... Oh, the kid is going to fall. <laughs> he's going to fall. He's going to bump his head. He's going to bruise his knees. Mm -hmm. And all you do is pick it up and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. And put him back down to do it again. Amen. <laughs> it's funny. When I was training to ride a bicycle, I had training wheels. Yeah. And one day, the brother that was training me says, Dave, you got to take those training wheels off. I said, what do you mean? Yeah. How, how do I balance the bicycle? If I don't have the training, he said, you can't ride the bicycle all your life mm. with training wheels. Come you can't be a Christian Come all on. your life and got your training Come wheels on. on. Sir, There's amen. some time where you got to take yes. off yes. the training I mean, wheels. Yeah. Amen? I mean, yeah. Amen. 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 Got to put you in the midst of riding that bicycle on two wheels. Mm. I'll tell you what, I can get on a bicycle right now, today, and fall off. <laughs> God loves you, Bishop. God loves you. The things, the things that I want to say, I can't say publicly. I can help. Love you, dear. But when your child falls down, did you give them a 30 minute lecture? No. Do you spank them? No. Do you send them to their room? No. No. You pick them up. You dust them off. You correct them and say, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And what? You put them right back on the right same there. very bicycle That's that they right. just fell off. Amen. You don't scold them. They're babies. In whatever area of their life. Sometimes they may be a teenager. They're still babies in that particular area. Yes. Yeah. 
Likewise, God doesn't look at you and say you blew it. That was so stupid of you. Mm, thank you, Lord. How could you go like that and fall down? Mm, my God. No, he knows our frame. He knows what we're like. He knows you make mistakes because he made you. Yes. He knows what makes you tick. As a result, he's never disappointed when you blow it. Mm. In order to be disappointed with somebody, mm -hmm. you've got to expect them to do something yeah. different. I need to repeat that this morning. If you are dispo disappointed with someone in your life and in your relationship, you've got to expect them to do something different. But God already knows what you're going to do. all the mistakes Ooh, you're ever going to make. Thank Tomorrow, you. next week, and all the sins you'll commit for the rest of your life. He won't be such a... I've always stated this. God is not in heaven doing this, wringing his hands because you made a mistake mm. or that you blew it. He can't be disappointed because it won't be any surprise. Amen. So why should we? Hey, all right. Why should we be disappointed? <laughs> because of our own inconsistency. Mm, 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 mm. Number two, Jesus understand because he's been there too. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Yes. Yeah. But was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Mm. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of God, yes. grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Yes. So why does God not get uptight with us? <laughs> because Jesus has been there. He chooses as God to wrap himself in simple flesh. Why did he have to do it? Come on, some scholars that are being taught. Why? Because he couldn't, uh, couldn't come down and Right, because okay, and everyone would drop dead just he's looking at it. He's a spirit. He's spirit. Can't shed blood. And the light would have shined, and we would just fall. Yep. Mm. Oh, but God <clears throat> choose to wrap Himself in simple flesh, so that He may understand our weaknesses. Mm, mm, mm. So what you're going through right now. God's already been through for yes, it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I think that deserves a hand off to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Mm. He's experienced the same temptations. Yes, Lord. He's gone through the same hassles. And he knows where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. When you come to Christ, you are in Christ. in Christ. And you don't have to worry that whatever sin, whenever you sin, you have to hide from God. Mm. That's the typical reaction. Yes. When we when we sin, we are to, you know, that's our typical reaction. When we sin, we run from God instead of to God. Yes, yes. Yet running to God is how we get over the sin. Amen. But as humans, we do the opposite. We do the opposite. We run away from it. Mm. I've had individuals who stopped coming to church for a while because, well, I guess I blew it. Mm. Why do I need to go and gather myself together? That's the time that you need to gather That's yourself the together. Time. Absolutely. When you fall in this service and you come and tell me you fall, guess what? Like the bishop did this morning, you're going to get called out. Come pray. Come lead us. Why? Because that's where God wants you. God wants to begin to position you again on the front. You are part of the front lines. You are missing in action. Mm. We don't want to put you in the back row. The back row belongs for those who are just coming in. And as they come in and grow, they start moving. Okay? The back row is not for us because we fail God. God does not punish me when I sin. You don't punish your child when they fall. No. Do you? No. What is punishment? Well, punishment is payment for past sin. Mm -hmm. Why does God not punish me? Well, the, here we call the law of double jeopardy. It says that once you've been condemned, 
punished for a crime, you can't be convicted and condemned again yeah. for the same crime. Right. We do that in the world. We sure do. The Bible says that Jesus Christ took all the punishment. All of it. All my sins, Thank every you. one Thank that you. I'm ever going to commit, Thank and he took, he took the punishment for me 2,000 years ago. Well, why would God punish Jesus Christ and then come and say, um, son and daughter, that wasn't enough? Mm. You hear God saying that? No. Nope. Thank you. Lord. He said, I had to come and give myself. But now he's going to tell you it's not enough. Mm. Mm. Jesus took our punishment, so a Christian is never punished for his sins. Mm, He's disciplined. Yes. There's a big difference, difference. between discipline Hallelujah. and punishment. Why? Romans 5.18 said, Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, <laughs> Adam blew it, mm -hmm. and everyone paid the result, right? Mm -hmm. Sin came into the world. The world. We right. have a fallen nature. That's In fact, right. that is why... We, we continue to sin because of that fallen nature. Right. Not because of what God created. You cannot say that God created something bad because my Bible said he created all that's good. Hallelujah. It's good. Okay. Woo, thank you. So one man, Adam, caused the problem. Yep. One man, Jesus, brought the solution yes. by taking the penalty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter three eighteen, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, mm -hmm. that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh and made alive by the Spirit. Yes. Jesus Christ took the punishment for everyone. Everybody, thank you, oh, thank you, everyone. Mm. Why would God punish believers when Jesus Christ took the punishment on the cross? Mm -mm -mm. How do I allow sin mm -hmm. not to be washed away as white as snow? Wow. I like what you said, Bishop. He doesn't just cover our sin. He washes it away. Thank you, Lord. As far as the east is from the west. Oh, hallelujah. You know why? Because if it was north and south, there are poles. Mm. There would be a stoppage. But the east and the west, keep oh. on going. Yes. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Mm. So your past has been paid for. Yes, thank you, God. Why are you continuing to live in the past? Mm -hmm. When we fail to understand this point, folks, we start expecting God to punish us. And we start looking for things to say, maybe that's God getting back at me. <laughs> you get sick or you lose your job or you have financial difficulty, God must be repaying me for that sin I did oh, 20 help years us. Help ago. Us. Help us. Now you're going to get the fruits of it. But you have Christ, right? Yes. You are in Christ. In Christ. When, when you are in Christ, you can walk through those fruits. Oh, yes. Thank you, God. Some people commit one thing 20 years ago and spend the rest of their lives mm -hmm. thinking that God is trying to get even. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> Do you think he has the time to sit down and wonder wow. about what you did 20 years ago? He, 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 he's got a score to settle? Oh, come to the cross. I got a score to settle. I know what you did 20 years ago. I'm going to punish you now. <laughs> That's what it means to, to live under no condemnation. God's not trying to get even with us. If you are a believer this morning, your sins have been paid for, yes. and God does not hold grudges. Amen. Hallelujah. You are not an enemy. And therefore, if you are not an enemy, you are not an enemy of the body of Christ. Amen. No believer can tell you that you are an enemy because that believer is walking in the same grace <laughs> that you are walking Amen. in. Amen. So we can't point out somebody's fault. Mm. The last thing I, 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 I say every day to us is the pointing of the finger. The Bible said, remove it from among us. Yes. 
What does that mean? Pointing out somebody is out sin. Because, you know, we are a little better mm. than, 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 than sister so-and-so, no. you know. We, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four. Help us. Pointing to the finger. Proverbs say, remove it mm, mm, mm. from among us. It will affect your total lifestyle when you get what it means to live not under condemnation. Folks, I'm not creating a license to sin this morning. Mm. And I'm going to address that right now. Some people think when you know God's going to accept you no matter what you do, then you'll do whatever you want. Ooh. No, you won't. No, you won't. Psalms 103 verse 9 and 12. Write it down. Mm. Psalms 103 verse 9 to 12. He will not always strive with us, oh, yes. nor will he keep his anger forever. Oh, yes. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, right. nor punish us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. <laughs> Amen. God doesn't treat Amen. us. Hallelujah. Amen. The way that you deserve to oh, be treated. Oh God, I thank you. Mm. If you got what you deserve, folks, mm, mm, mm. me and you would not be here this morning. No, God. Whew. You would already be dead physically, mm, mm, mm. and so would I. Jeez. I don't deserve any of the blessings of God in my life. I do not deserve it. Mm. Can we live with that? Because he will not repay us according to our iniquities. Oh, God, thank you. Mm. Why didn't he say as far as the north is from the south? I explained that to you. Because there's a north pole mm -hmm. and a south pole, mm -hmm. and they come to an end. They come, yes, right. But the east and west polarized. Uh -huh. continue forever. That's right. You can never be brought back into conflict and condemnation <laughs> with the sins you have committed. Why am I making such a big case about this this morning, Pastor Dave? The reason why a lot of people can't get close to God or enjoy fellowship or relationship with Him is because they're afraid of Him. Wow. As a believer this morning, you and I do not have to be afraid of God. The fear that the Bible talks about is reverence, reverence. awe, respect. Yes. You don't call uh, God the big daddy in the sky. You don't treat him flippantly. Mm -hmm. You don't, you respect God, but you don't have to fear, fear. God. Yes, yes. All of the punishment, guilt, and shame, and penalty that I spoke about in the beginning has been taken by Jesus Christ. The Bible said he has made us what? Friends. Mm, yes. He called us friends. Hallelujah. That is what it means to live without condemnation. Amen. So what happens, pastor, when a Christian sins? If we are saved totally from all those things, and God accepts me no matter what I do, if I cannot lose my salvation, mm -hmm. and God is not going to be angry with me, if he'll be patient with me, my inconsistencies, and he's going to love me regardless, why should I be good? My Lord. That's what Romans 6 was about. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Shall we continue in sin that grace is about? We talked about that That's this morning. Right. God forbid. Every time we sin, God's grace is shown, so let's do something where God can show a lot of grace. My, really? My, my, That's my, ridiculous. My, my, my. Makes no difference at all. Your sin, my sin, as far as God's acceptance of you is concerned, but it makes a big difference in your daily happiness. Yes, it does. It makes a difference in your rewards in heaven. It makes a big difference in what happens to other people. Mm -hmm. And it makes a big difference in lots of other ways. So let's talk about that. Every time you sin, your, your potential to proclaim the kingdom of God is reduced. That's right. Every time <coughs> you sin. You're taking a you're you're walking forward. Take a step back, please. 
but you're doing this. <coughs> and not just a step, mm -hmm. about two or three. And who is it affected? The person that you should be going forward towards. My Lord. Mm. Are you listening to me this morning? Yes, sir. It's a little hot in here and a little quiet. Amen. What does happen when a Christian sins? If he isn't condemned, if God isn't angry with us, if God doesn't reject us, if God doesn't get impatient with me or frustrated, what happens when I sin? Four things that I'm going to talk about today. There are more, but I'm going to talk about these four. All right. Okay. It brings conviction from God. Mm, yes. A Christian is not condemned. They're convicted. By who? Holy Spirit. That's right. The Bible says in John 16, verse 8, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin yes. and of righteousness and of judgment. That is the Holy Spirit's ministry to convict, not the believer. <laughs> so therefore, we don't point fingers. Because the believer is not called not to that job. ministry. Not your job. Not your job. Amen. Okay, too high for your pay grade. <laughs> above your pay grade. <laughs> It's above your pay grade, right? Yes. <laughs> Conviction means God is making me aware of my sin. When I read the word of God, thank you, Deacon, for sharing that. When I read the word of God, I'm convicted of my sin. Yes. When I listen to a Bible study or take part or take part of a service, I don't necessarily feel convicted. But when the Holy Spirit gets me in one-on-one -on -one and reading my word, Ooh. I'm convicted. Jesus. So what does the enemy cause us to do? Mm, not read. <clears throat> not read. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm going to read my word. Mm. Oh, I read my word tonight. Mm, mm, mm. You're not lying to me. You're lying to the Holy Spirit, That's right? That's right. That's right. And by the way, if you tell me that you're reading your word, you're lying to the Holy Spirit that is in me. That's right. And the Holy Spirit brings conviction. All right? Now. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. When you sin, God will make you aware. He's not going to make you feel guilty. No. Nope. That's what the enemy do. Yes, that's right. Oh, that was wrong. Do you know how wrong that was? <laughs> yes, Pastor. That's guilt. And dare I to put guilt on anyone... This morning. There you go. Dare you to put guilt on anybody. On anyone this morning. Amen. Listen to me this morning, folks. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. God is not going to say to you, you're worthless, no good. <laughs> you're valueless. But he's going to say, that was wrong. Acts 237. But wait a minute. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the other prophet, what, what shall we do? Woo, yes, Lord. Here's a clear example of conviction. Yes. Have you ever heard a sermon that did that to you? Oh, man, many. Have you ever had a sermon do that without you feeling really dumb on yourself? Sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you can be cut to the heart. And say, I'm not living up to my potential That's in right. Christ Jesus. This is what I could do. How do you tell the difference between condemnation and conviction? Condemnation says I'm no good and I'll never be any good. Conviction says, what, what shall, shall we do? do? Yes. Conviction says, I'm going to change and make a difference. I'm not only going to make a difference for me, I'm going to make a difference for what God is executing through me. Amen. I'm going to ask God to work it out in my life. Uh, One of the biggest problems I see in Christian lives is the distinguishing the difference between the accusations of Satan and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren, I mean, that's and yet the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. How do you tell the difference? Whether it is Satan accusing you or when it's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Satan in general terms, and I repeat it again, says you're lousy. You'll never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. 
There's a whole lot of people in this house this morning that the enemy has told they'll never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. He's alive. Okay? From the beginning. Yes, Lord. Okay? The Holy Spirit is specific. Holy Spirit says to you, you're not having a quiet time. That was a word of jealousy. Mm. You're feeling guilt. You're not walking in my peace. Yes. What do I do, Lord? Repent. <laughs> Read the seven churches if you get a chance yeah. in Revelation. Repent! That's right. Very specific about our sin. And Holy Spirit will point it out. Look at the difference between Peter and Judas. If you ever do a deep study of both of them. Judas responded to condemnation and hung himself. Mm -hmm. Peter responded to conviction, conviction and went on to weep bitterly. Sixty days later, God used him to lead 3,000 to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's the difference. Yes. Number two, sin hurts other people around us, especially those that are close to us. Mm -hmm. My sins hurt my family and my sin hurt my friends. David numbered Israel in 1 Chronicles 21, and the whole nation suffered. The whole nation. Because why? God said, don't, don't number. Don't. That's right. Okay? Don't number. That's why you don't see us stand up this morning and put on our board over here how many people were in church last Sunday. Or how much offering we took up. <coughs> because now you're, you're trusting who? That board. That board. And the people. And the people? No. I trust God. Amen. He alone knows. If you want to know, you get a statement every year. <laughs> Amen. You can look into it and see. All right? Now, yes. sin hurts other people. When we sin, it does not change anything about our relationship to God. He understands that old nature. He understands our struggle. But Paul, in the middle of his struggle is saying there is no condemnation. No condemnation huh? I used to think the only way you could get out of condemnation was to get out of the struggle. Mm. But I understood in the word of God that's a no. It is even when I'm in the struggle that God doesn't condemn me. I will have the conviction of God in my life. He will point out the things that are wrong. He will say the things that are causing my relation to him to go into a lapse. Yes. Oh, thank God for seeing that. Hallelujah. I will hurt myself physically, emotionally, and spiritually as a natural consequence. Mm. Because I don't know that truth. Mm. Number three, fellowship with God is broken. Yes, it is. Yes. Relationship and fellowship, two different things. Mm -hmm. Come on, I told you I'm going deep today. The relationship to God is not broken. <clears throat> You're still a Christian. You're still a child of God, but with the fellowship is broken. I could totally dishonor my parents and lead a lifestyle that they totally disagree with. But the relationship will always be there. Mm -hmm. Man, I have told someone you can wipe the name off the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. still, still, still a parent. Still a parent. Mm -hmm. You can refuse to admit and acknowledge them as a parent. They are still your kids. Okay. That's right. That's right. So keep on running. Keep on doing what you're doing. Guess what? I'm still a parent. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And you can't do nothing, nothing about, about it. it. <laughs> you can take me to court and have my name removed. You can change your name, by the way. Mm -hmm. Can't change that you are my kid. Can't change that DNA. Can't okay. Hallelujah. Uh, that, that's the next thing they're going to come up with. Okay. <laughs> God accepts you without giving blanket approval to do whatever you that's want right. to do. That's right. And that's the area that we want to hit this morning. Your fellowship is broken. 
John 1, 6 and 7. John, 1 John, sorry. 1 John 1, 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him mm. and walk in darkness, mm. we lie. lie. And do not practice the truth. Many people associate this with salvation. They're wrong. Okay? Because if God saves you, you're saved. You're saved. So it's not about your fellowship. It's not about your relationship. It's talking about fellowship. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with who? One another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So how do you know when you're in fellowship? Mm -hmm. The joy of being in fellowship even though you're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The joyful Christian has harmony with God. David wrote in Psalms 51 that he had committed adultery with Bathsheba. What was his request? Restore the joy of, your of my salvation. Yes, God. He hadn't lost his salvation. He lost his joy. Yes. He had lost his fellowship. Mm -hmm. He had lost that communion that he had with God, mm -hmm. where he can say, Daddy, what next? Papa, Papa where, do I, where do I go next? Where do I go next, my Lord? Mm -hmm. He wasn't hearing anything. Mm -hmm. He had lost that fellowship. Mm -hmm. Our kids who are out there in the world have lost fellowship with us. But they haven't removed us in relationship. The thing about the enemy is that he's confusing them to think that relationship and fellowship is the same thing. Mm. That's the problem. Number four. Loss of rewards in heaven. You will lose rewards if you sin and continue to do so in the Christian life. That's right. 2 John 8 said, watch out that you do not lose what you work for, but, what, but that you may be rewarded fully. He's not talking about your salvation, folks. No. Because you don't work for your salvation. <laughs> Hello? You Are you listening this morning? Hallelujah. He's talking about rewards. In heaven. How do you lose your rewards? Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God, but whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. And the Son. Have you ever wondered what happens to someone who's born again and then fall into a cult? Do they lose their salvation? 2 John 8 says, if God saves them, they have lost their reward. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to a Christian when they go and they start <coughs> announcing other cults, mm -hmm. okay, or not other ways, okay. Now, 1 Corinthians 3, 14 and 15, write that down. By the grace God has given me, I laid the foundation, Paul said, as an expert builder. Yes. He talks about building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation, using gold and silver, listen to me, folks, and costly stones, or wood, hay, and straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. Amen. What did we just talk about? That's right. If this foundation has been laid on any other reason mm. for having a building to have a church in this area, then we were living on the wrong mm. foundation. Okay? A couple of years ago, Deacon, remind me, I can't remember, it doesn't matter. A couple of years ago, we realized the back end of this building wasn't on the property the church has. What did we say? We need to either expand the land mm -hmm. or find a way where it's on the property of the church. Because nobody will be able to say, we had a hand mm. in building up the kingdom of God. No, you did not. Shoot, cut it off! Hard negotiations, so hard I had to get Elder Tony to say, you take it, because if I get involved, somebody's going to get hurt. Yes, thank you, and I've got better things to do. Okay, I got, I got a couple that i got to save that the Lord wants to bring into his kingdom. I, I don't have time to be 
fooling around with land. You take that, sir. And he said, okay, pastor, I'll keep you posted. Today, this building is on, on the land. It's own land. Amen. Nobody else's. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, if you build something and you're bringing gold, silver, precious stones, or the fluff, wood, hay, and stubble, stubble. Mm -hmm. and it gets burned up, yes. Okay, what happens with you? Mm -hmm. What happens? Lose your reward. You lose your reward. Mm -hmm. Not your salvation. Your reward. Okay? So what should a Christian do when he sins? It's not enough to just say Jesus is the answer. You've got to show how he is the answer. How does he help me with my relationship? How does he help me with my marriage? How does he help me in life? How does he help me deal with sin? Sunday morning, folks, is like the emergency room in a hospital. From the moment you arrive to the time you leave, People come in week after week bleeding. <coughs> there are people that have created an unpleasable God. Mm. God is not pleased with me. So I can't be in church this morning. Mm. They don't know what it means to live without condemnation. condemnation. It is important that we, that we be practical in our Christian life. You've got to get to the point. How can it change my life? Let's wrap that up, Bishop. What should a Christian do then when he sins? Because it's in the doing that's important. That's right. Number one, when you sin, the first thing you do is remind yourself that Jesus has already paid for that sin. Yes. And he is up there in heaven pleading Intercede. your defense yes. Yes, because yes. he has become our advocate. Yes. You can find that in 1 John Chapter 2, 1 and 2. 1 John, chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, sorry, verse 1 and 2. There can be no double jeopardy. Number 2, confess it. Mm -hmm. Don't keep it to yourself. Be open. Be open. Call upon these elders. Call upon the deacons. Find somebody and say, listen man, I'm going through a struggle right now and I don't know how to go. You know, oh, but don't let pastor know. <laughs> well, we all work together in this Amen. house. Amen. We are not working against each other. That's right. So guess what? It's like you walking into a husband and wife and says, um, dear, this is what's going on in my life, but don't let my husband know. Excuse me? No, no. Then you better keep it to keep yourself. Keep it to yourself. Amen. Because yeah. now you're getting into covenant agreements. I'm telling Okay, all right. Yeah, you're telling, okay. Confession simply means I agree with God. And you say, God, I was wrong. I was jealous today. I got angry with my, my spouse today unnecessarily. And that, by the way, goes for any person. Mm -hmm. I was kind of short with that person. I had a judgmental, critical attitude. Confession does not mean, please, 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 God, please. God wants to forgive you. Or bargain with God. God, if you forgive me, I'll never do this again. Ha! See, he heard that. He said, that's your particular area of weakness, doesn't it? And you'll be right there saying the same thing 24 hours later. Okay. If you happen to be a gossip, Sorry to say to you, it's going to be a lifelong struggle to get out of it. If you happen to be a negative person, it's going to be a lifetime struggle. If you have a problem with pride, it's going to be a lifetime struggle. Because over and over again, you'll seem to want to you fall back. Confession doesn't take care of the future. It simply gets you back into fellowship right now. So don't bribe God, please. God, if you'll forgive me, I promise I'll read my Bible every day. I promise that I'll witness every day. Don't make promises. Don't make promises. 
Number three, just speak the same words and admit it, and you have fellowship. Last but not least this morning, accept forgiveness. Yes. And forgive yourself. Let me say that again. Accept forgiveness. It is easy to ask forgiveness. It is harder to believe that we are forgiven. Okay. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more then will the blood of Christ, through whom the eternal spirit <coughs> offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. God wants you to serve him with a clear consciousness. And when you refuse to accept God's forgiveness, when you refuse to forgive yourself, when you insist on continually condemning yourself from your mistakes, you are not living under grace, you are living under the law. God does not motivate his children out of fear or manipulation or guilt or threat of punishment or threat of rejection or anger or condemnation because we are in Christ Jesus. God. Amen. 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 Amen.